There's a common misconception that being a professional cyclist is all to do with how strong you are on the bike, when actually being a pro is more to do with how you look and act while out on the bike. That's right, what you drink at the cafe stop and how often you shave your legs are just as important as how high your FTP may be. So in today's video, we're gonna give you some of our top tips on how to look more professional. Cruising around with minimal body weight, pro cyclists are much more susceptible to getting sick or cold when on the bike compared to us mere mortals. That means that even when the sun comes out, chances are pros will continue to wrap up and overdress for their training rides. So if you want to look more pro, make sure you layer up. Leg and arm warmers are necessary for any ride under 20 degrees, as well as a gilet or even your thickest winter jacket. Snoods will be needed for them long descents, and let's not neglect a nice set of thick, fleeced winter gloves either. Pro cyclists will not be caught dead with a set of exposed legs unless they have been perfectly shaved. Now, professional cyclists actually have some very practical reasons as to why they shave their legs. Due to the frequency in which they receive post-race massages, a bald leg is much easier and more comfortable to be worked on by the masseur or soigneur. Also, pro cyclists are much more likely to crash and suffer from road rash. A bald leg allows bandages to be attached directly to the skin and the lack of hair means there's less chance of getting infection through the open wounds. However, talk to any pro cyclist about the real reason they shave their legs and they'll be honest with you. It's because it makes them look so much better. Alongside the supermodel and the postman and postwoman, us cyclists have the best sets of legs in the entire world. So why not shave off the hair and show them off for the rest of the world to see? The crown that makes a cyclist king or queen the simple cycling cap, capolino, casket, is an essential part of any cyclist wardrobe. Now, there are so many rules around the cycling cap and how it should be worn that we could probably make an individual video just on that. Maybe one day we will, but for today, we're gonna hit you with the headline axe. Now, rule number one, the cycling cap should only ever be worn while riding your bike, at a cycling race, at a cycling event, in Shoreditch, in Manchester's Northern Quarter, maybe in Brighton, probably in Bristol. Yeah, probably that. Then also, when you're wearing the cap on the bike, under your helmet, the peak can be up or down. That's not an issue, but it should never be backwards. Nor should the cycling cap be worn unless you're wearing a set of arm warmers either, as the cap is only there for spring classic riding. And finally, when you get to the cafe stop, like we are here, the cycling cap has to be worn in a very particular way and it's all about Luft. What is Luft? Well, Luft is a way of life, German for air. It is how you perfectly perch this piece of cotton on top of your head. Now, you don't want to push it down too far, otherwise it'll look like a cycling cap. And if you have it out too high, the wind will catch it and it'll end up getting blown in the road. If you want some perfect examples of how you should wear your Luft, look no further than the likes of Miguel Induran, Rudy Aldig, and Roger de Vlamic the masters of look. Right, when it comes to the cafe stop, we're gonna to cut to the chase. If you're a professional cyclist, you drink coffee, not tea. No, thank you. This isn't Claridge's, this isn't your Nan's house, and we're not in Yorkshire. We stick to the strong Italian stuff here, and there's some pretty strict rules around that too. Before 11 a.m., indulge yourself, have some milk, a cappuccino, a flat white, maybe even a latte. But as soon as that clock hits 11, stick to the espressos. Just the back stuff. Look, we're not quite sure why those are the rules, but they are, so stick to them. All right, we'll cut it straight here. No idea why the arms of our sunglasses have to go over the straps. It makes absolutely zero sense and will inevitably lead to your expensive set of sunglasses being dropped lens first on the floor at some point. But this is what the pros do, and we're not here to ask the questions. Just follow the rules. Mm. 
Nothing gets a gaggler cyclist going quite like socks. Style, colour, length, it really is a bone of contention. Take sock length, for example. It's such a heated debate that even the UCI, the governing body of all things cycling, have a very specific set of rules about how long your socks can be in competition. Now, there are two basic schools of thought on this. Some say the shorter the better, that the socks should just be above the ankle, but those people are usually quite old and still ride Campagnolo. Then there are those who say the higher the better, just like Matteo van der Poel, but those people are usually so young that they still play Fortnite. Here at Cyclist, we like to go for the middle. We say the socks should sit just between the calf and the ankle, a six inch cuff. Measure it with a Subway sandwich if you have to. Then we get onto the issue of sock color. Fluorescent, pattern, styles, red, blue. It's a real minefield of choice. Here at Cyclist, we say the most pro look, however, is a set of plain white socks and a set of plain black shoes. Just how the great Eddie Merckx intended it to be. The one issue of white socks, however, is that they get very grubby very quickly. So you're gonna wanna get a new set every two to three wears. The biggest tell of any pro cyclist is their tan lines. Spending so much time on the bike in the summer months, little can be done to avoid those dodgy set of lines on the arms and legs. But fear not, these lines should actually be celebrated as a mark of pride, proof that you, like a pro cyclist, have spent plenty of time on the bike in the summer. Now, the big focus points are gonna be the quad, where the bib shorts stop, and your arms where the sleeves end. The trick is to make sure that all of your kit is of uniform length, otherwise you'll be left with a faded tan line and looking like a Neapolitan ice cream. And if you haven't got the time to get out on the bike and cultivate those tan lines naturally, fear not, there's no problem in just sunbathing in your cycling gear. And last but not least, never show your emotions while on the bike. Pro cyclists do not smile on the bike, nor do they show that they're in pain. The only exception to the rules are Little Esteban Shevers and Mr. Thomas Fockler. But apart from that, stony blue still only, please. Think Vasil Kirienka. Serious faces, people. Now, if you think we grossly overlooked any obvious tips to make you look more pro, be sure to send yours in on a postcard, or better yet, just comment below this video. If you did like our content, be sure to send this on to all of your mates who look unpro on the bike. Give this video a like, simply for my self-esteem, and subscribe to the Cyclist YouTube channel for more hot content.